All right, welcome back to quadratic equations. So, or polynomial equations. Uh, quadratic is to the second power, but we're going to deal with things to the third power, fourth power, fifth power, etc. Um, but this will sort of make a sense on why we were factoring. Remember when we would get something like um, y squared um, minus uh, 11y plus 10. And this was an expression. So we have this expression. We were asked to factor it. We go through the steps. Is it in standard form? Does it have a common factor? Is it a special case? Special cases meaning is it a binomial uh, difference of square? Is it a binomial square? 4 was a times c, and then 5 was uh, fbg, factor by grouping. So those were the different ways of factoring. So uh, we go through, it's, there's no common factor, it's not a special case, this has three terms, so three terms would be binomial square. This is not a perfect square, so we know it's not a binomial square, so we would have to do a times c. And a times c we take a, which is 1, a is the coefficient of the squared value, and c is the constant. And so a times c, we would do 1 times 10 equals 10. Factors of 10 are 1 and 10, 2 and 5. Since this is positive, we know the signs are the same. And then we look here and we see that both of them are negative. So my signs of my factor pairs are both going to be negative. This makes negative 11. This makes negative 7. Which one of those equals my middle? Well, my middle is negative 11. So I'm going to take these values and I'm going to split this trinomial into a polynomial, into four terms. And that's by taking this middle term and taking this, negative 1y minus 10y plus 10. And these two values came from these two values, negative 1 and negative 10. So that's where I got the negative 1 and negative 10 here. So, <clears throat> and now we're going to use factor by grouping. So we're going to group the first two terms and the second two terms. So we want to find a common factor. So a common factor of y squared minus 1y would be y. They both have a y. If we factor it out, you get y minus 1. And then we look and look for a common factor of the second two. Common factor, we notice that the first term is negative. So I'm going to factor out a negative 10, which gives me y minus 1. We make sure that these two parentheses are identical. If they are, I know I did it right. So I have that in common, so I'm going to factor that out. And then what does that leave me with? That leaves me with y minus 10. And we turn something that was addition and subtraction into multiplication. That's called factoring. If we think about it, 12 is sort of adding and subtracting. We turn that addition and subtraction into multiplication, into a factors, three times four. So we like that. When we can do that, we can simplify things. So in this section, we're really going to be working towards making addition and subtraction things products, but we're also going to do it in equations. And what we're going to base that upon is a <clears throat> multiplication, if we have a times b equals 0, we know something. We know that either a must be 0 or b must be 0. One of those must be 0 because that's the only way that when you multiply two numbers that you get 0. 5 times 0 equals 0. 7 times 0 equals 0. 0 times negative 4 equals 0. There's no way you can get 0 from a product 
without one of those two being zeros. They both can be zero also, but one of those has to be zero. There's no other way that you can get zero by multiplying two numbers without one of them being zero. If you have one half times one, that doesn't equal zero. That equals one. If you have negative five times positive five, that equals negative 25, doesn't equal zero. So um, inverses or reciprocals and here we go, inverse of uh, or opposites don't create zero. The only way that you can get zero through a product is that one of those two numbers must equal zero. So we're going to use that. And we see that in this first example, you have solve x plus 2 times the quantity x minus 5 equals 0. So if we look at that, x plus 2 x, I think it was minus 5, minus 5 equals 0. So we have two products. We have this number times this number equals zero. So one of these two must equal zero. Either this piece equals zero, and right now, if x equals zero, would this piece equal zero? What's zero plus two? No, two. So that doesn't make zero, but we need it to be zero. What would make this box, this yellow box, equal to zero? Well, zero doesn't. If we plug in zero for x, we just saw that that would make this box equal to two. So what would make that equal to zero? Well, we can go off to the side here and we can go x plus two equals zero. And that's saying, what does x have to be when it's added to two to equal zero? So we subtract two and we find out that, oh, when x is equal to negative two, negative 2 plus 2, this box equals 0. That's good. So one of my solutions is negative 2. And now we're going to go over to this other box because this has to also equal 0. So if we plug in 0, what would that box equal? 0 minus 5. That would equal negative 5. Well, that wouldn't make 0. So we need to know that it can't be zero. So again, we take this box and we write x minus five, when does x minus five equal zero? Well, we solve for x and we find out that when x is equal to five, five minus five, that box equals zero. So we have to find both instances. When does the left box equal zero and when does the right box equal zero? And if we can get one of those equaling zero, we know that this equation would be true. And this only works when that product on the left is equal to zero. So we always have to make sure that that equation is equal to zero so we can utilize the zero property. So when x is negative two or x is five are the solutions. Because if I plug in, let's test them now and we can see what I'm sort of talking about here, we have x plus 2, x minus 5 equals 0. Let's test these solutions. So let's test it when it's negative 2. So we would plug in negative 2 for x. If x is negative 2, negative 2 plus 2 equals 0. Negative 2 minus 5 is negative 7. And 0 times negative 7 equals 0. Yeah, it worked. And then let's try with 5. What if we plug in 5 for x? 5 plus 2 is 7. 5 minus 5 is 0. 7 times 0 is 0. And yes, 0 equals 0. So when we plug those two solutions in, it worked for that equation. What if I tried a different number? What if I tried 2? No, not two, excuse me. What if, well, yeah, let's try two. Let's try two plus two and two minus five. Well, two plus two is four. Two minus five is negative three. Four times negative three is negative 12. Does negative 12 equal zero? No. So two would not be a solution. So instead of just guessing at it, what we do is we set each of those um, 
each of those variables and whatever else is going on with it equal to zero and that will be a nice easy way of using the zero property to help us figure out what our solutions are. So let's take this at a very basic level. Let's start with one of these problems. So here is a problem and we have the quantity of y plus 5 times the quantity of y minus 7 equals 0. All right, so what, we, what we're going to do is we're going to separate each one and set it equal to 0 and then solve for it. Minus 5, y equals negative 5, add 7, y equals 7. So when y is equal to negative 5 or 7, we know that those are going to be the solutions to that. And it's as easy as that. Well, this is easy because they gave us a product. Let's look at another example. This is still a product. Notice that this is still times those things. So we're going to separate each one and set it equal to zero. So how do I isolate n? We're going to divide it by 15. n equals zero. And then we're going to subtract 15. And we get n equals negative 15. So my solutions, always in numerical order, is going to be negative 15 and zero. So these are nice. We like this because each time they're giving us a product that's equal to zero, and that's our goal. So understand that this beginning step is uh, relatively simple because they've already done all the heavy lifting for us. They've presented it to us as a product of two numbers that equals zero. You'll see in a second where the heavy lifting is. So let's separate them. 2t minus 3 equals zero and 3t minus 2 equals 0. So we're going to add 3, get rid of things being added and subtracted first. Divide by 2. t equals 3 halves. Let's add 2. 3t equals 2. Divide by 3. t equals 2 thirds. Let's put them in numeric order. 2 thirds is smaller than 3 halves. So those would be my solutions. Whoa, look at this. This is a little bit different. What do we notice? Yeah, there's three things that are being multiplied this time. So we're going to take 3x. We're going to set it equal to 0. We're going to take 2x plus 1. We're going to set it equal to 0. We're going to take 2x plus 5 and set it equal to 0. Remember, our goal is to find out what would make, what value of x makes that zero? What value of x makes that zero? What value of x makes that zero? Because one of these three must be zero if they're multiplying and it equals zero. That's called the zero property. So let's take each piece and solve for x. Divide both sides by three. We're gonna subtract one. You get 2x equals negative 1, divide by 2. You get x equals negative 1 half. Subtract 5. 2x equals negative 5, divide by 2. We get x equals negative 5 halves. So my solutions in numeric order is negative 5 halves, negative 1 half, and 0. Those are the solutions to that equation. All right, now notice this is not multiplying. So how can I take this addition and subtraction and turn it into a product? I want to find factoring it. Now it should sort of make sense. Oh, that's why we're doing it. Yeah, so we would go through our steps. Is it in standard form? Yes. Does it have a common factor? No. Is it a special case? Well, since it has three terms, I would just be testing for a binomial square. And it's not a binomial square because this is not a perfect square. And second sign is not positive. 
So we would go to A times C. Okay, A times C. So A is equal to 1. Remember, we are in AX squared plus BX plus C equals 0, or technically Y. And my A value is the coefficient of my squared value. So the coefficient of P squared is 1, so that's my A. And then my C is negative 6. And now I need factors of 6, which are 1 and 6, 2 and 3. My signs are different when it's subtraction. When it's negative, it's, uh, the signs are different. And the bigger is negative. So I have these two, and the bigger is negative. And that means the smaller must be positive because these signs have to be different. The bigger of these two is negative and the smaller would be positive, and then I'm going to simplify that. Positive 1 and negative 6 gives me negative 5. Positive 2 and negative 3 gives me negative 1. Which one is equal to my middle? My middle value. My middle value is negative 1. So I'm going to use these two numbers, and I'm going to split that middle into... So I turn this trinomial into a polynomial. Remember, this still needs to equal this. We haven't changed the equation. It's an equivalent equation. If I simplified this, if I simplified this, it would still equal this top equation. All right. And what I'm doing here is I'm turning it into four because I'm going to utilize factor by grouping. And factor by grouping again says I take the first two and the second set of two. I'm going to find a common factor. So if I look at these first two, the common factor is a P. So I'll take out a P, and that leaves me with P plus 2. If I look at the second set, I first notice that my first term is negative. So I have to factor out a negative, and then I look and I can factor out a negative 3. So that leaves me with P plus 2 equals 0. And I know I did it right when my parentheses are identical. They must be the same. If they're not the same, then that's a tell, tell, telltale sign that I've done it wrong. So since they both have P plus 2, I'm going to factor that out. And then what does that leave me with? That leaves me with P minus 3 equals 0. Now, so let's go back to why did I, why did I do this? I did this because this is addition and subtraction. And just because it equals zero, I don't know what P can be when it's equal to zero when things are being added and subtracted. It's not until everything, until two things are multiplying that equals zero that now I know one of these must equal zero because if we're multiplying, and the way you multiply two numbers to get zero is that one of those must be zero. So I'm gonna set each one equal to zero, because I have to find out what is P to make it zero. So subtract two, P equals negative two, add three, P equals three. So my solutions to this problem are gonna be negative two, three. Remember that you always wanna list your numbers in numerical order. So I just found the solutions. What are the values of P? Let's go and check this because it's in a different format, much different than that product one. So let's look and test when it looks like this. What is that? Minus six. We never did it when it looked like this. So let's plug those in. Let's try it. Whoa. <clears throat> let's try it when P equals negative two. Negative two squared minus negative two minus six equals zero. Negative 2 squared gives me 4. The opposite of negative 2 is positive 2. 4 plus 2 is 6. 6 minus 6 is 0. And it worked, yeah. So that negative 2 is a solution. Let's try it when it's 3. So we'll plug in 3. 3 squared is 9, minus 3 minus 6 equals 0, 9 minus 3 is 6, 6 minus 6 is 0, and that works. So I just checked my answers, and yeah, 
these two solutions are negative 2, 3. Now they're getting a little bit more complicated. So what do we notice? We notice that that's not equal to 0. Remember, we have to get that left side equal to 0. So how do I make 0? How do I get rid of the 10r? Well, I'm going to subtract 10r from both sides. And that leaves me with r squared minus 10r plus 9 equals 0. These are not like terms. These are not like terms. We can't combine that. That's r squared, and this is r to the first. Like terms have the same variable to the same exponent, so we can't combine those. Now, we can do a times c. Some of you, hopefully, are able to see what that is factored. We see that the signs are the same. Both are negative, so we would have r minus 9, r minus 1. For the people who didn't see that, you would have to do a times c. a is 1, c is 9, factors of 9 are 1 and 9, 3 and 3, signs are the same. Since that's positive, they're the same, and we see they're both negative. So negative 1, negative 9, negative 3, negative 3, that makes negative 10, that makes negative 6. My middle is negative 10. So I would take r squared minus r, some of you can write 1r, I'm okay with that, minus 9r plus 9 equals 0. Where did I get these two numbers? From here, right here. So now we're going to factor by grouping. Look at the first two, look at the second two. Factor out an r, we get r minus 1. Factor out a negative 9, we get r minus 1. And that's where we get the r minus 1, r minus 9 equals 0. So some of you are going to be able to just jump to this because you can do it mental math. That's <clears throat> it's going to lead, that's a good telltale whether you're ready to get into geometry. And now since this product is equal to 0, we know that one of these must equal 0. What r equals 0? when r minus 9 equals 0, so we're going to add 9, r equals 9, we're going to add 1, r equals 1. So my solutions are 1 comma 9. Now, oh, look at that one. So first thing we need to see is, is it equal to 0? Nope. So let's set it equal to 0. Now, Remember, standard form, common factor. Is there a common factor? Yeah, there is a common factor of y. So if we factor that out, and now we're done. Why do we like this? We like this because it's a product of two things that equals 0. So we're going to set each one equal to 0 and find out what y needs to be. Well, that's nice and easy. y already is equal to 0. Add 16. y equals 16. So my two solutions are that. That's a good one. Real good one. Okay, again, all right. Two terms, it's equal to 0. So let's go through. Is it in standard form? Yes. Is there a common factor? Nope, nothing goes into 25 and 16, and they don't have a variable in common. Special cases. Well, it's two terms, so two, term, two terms, I'm always going to look at difference of squares. What are the three criteria of difference of squares? First thing is two terms. Does it have two terms? Yes. Subtraction? Yes. And are the first and third, P.S. I love you, perfect squares? Yeah. Okay, so this is the difference of squares. Remember, difference of squares are created by conjugates. So we're going to take the square root of the first, square root of the second, and then they're going to be identical but conjugates. Remember, conjugates are opposite. And they have to be opposite because we're missing our middle term here. We don't have a middle term. We have a first and a last. And that happens by having opposites. If there are conjugates, we notice that they end up being opposites. Positive 20m, negative 20m. 
would cancel that middle, hence why we don't have, hence why we only have two terms. So notice we have a product equaling zero. So we're going to set each one equal to zero. And we're going to solve minus four divide by five. negative four-fifths, add four, divide by five, m equals four-fifths. So we have negative four-fifths and positive four-fifths. You can do it that way, or high school, you'll see it plus or minus four-fifths. All right, so we see that it's equal to zero. There's only two terms, so is it in standard form? Yes. Is there a common factor? Yeah. Yeah, let's look at the coefficients first, four and negative two. My first term is positive, so I'm gonna factor out a positive. And positive four and negative two, let's factor out a two. And now, let's also look at the variables. We have y to the third, y to the second. Okay, so I can take out at least two y's y to the second. So if I factor that out, I'm left with 2y minus 1. And that equals 0, and that's a product. So I'm going to set each one equal to 0. We're going to divide by 2. We get y squared equals 0. What gets rid of a square root? Uh, <laughs> what gets rid of a square? Yes, a square root. So we're going to take the square root of both of those, and you get y equals plus or minus 0, which just means y equals 0. Whenever we take the square root of something being squared, we have to bring in the plus or minus. Let's look at the other one. We're going to add 1, divide by 2, y equals 1 half. So my solutions are 0 and one half. Done. Love it. That's a good challenging one. <gasps> Whoa! So we see this is y to the fourth. We see there's three terms. Ooh, right? So let's go through. Standard form, yes. Common factor, no. Special case. So it's three terms. So I'm going to look for binomial square. And binomial square has four things. Does it have three terms? Yes. Is second sign positive? Yes. Is the first and third perfect squares? Yes. Does the middle equal the square root of the first times the square root of the third times two? Does, my, does that equal my middle? So two times y squared times 3. Does that equal my negative? Well, not even negative. Sorry about that. Does that equal 10y squared? 6y uh, squared? Oh, no, it doesn't. So it's not a binomial square. So we have to do a times c. Just because it's to the fourth power doesn't mean that we can't continue to do a times c. We'll still use it. a is 1, c is 9, Factors of 9 are 1 and 9, 3 and 3. Signs are, since it's positive, they're considered the same. And they're both negative. Negative 1, negative 9, negative 3, negative 3. We get negative 10 and negative 6. Negative 10 is equal to my middle. So I'm going to take this. y to the fourth stays. Our first and last stays. It's our middle that we're going to break up. And that variable is always going to stay the same. So we have negative 1y squared minus 9y squared plus 9 equals 0. Let's factor by grouping. So we can take out a y squared. That leaves me with y squared minus 1. We can take out a negative 9, which leaves me with y squared minus 1 equals 0. They're the same in the parentheses, so I know I did it right. I'm going to pull that out. I'm going to factor it out. And what does that leave me with? y squared minus 9 
equals zero. Now, there are a couple ways you can do this. So we can look at this and we can go, okay, hey, Mr. Mac, I notice that these are difference of squares. I could create y minus one, y plus one, and y minus three, y plus three equals zero. And we can set them each equal to zero. We can go y minus one equals zero, y plus one equals zero, y minus three equals zero, y plus three equals zero. So y equals one, y equals negative one, y equals three, y equals negative three. And my solutions would be plus or minus one, plus or minus three. Woo! Or, or you could have just listed them. Negative three, negative one, one, three would have been okay. But let's take a look at this. What if I set each of those equal to zero? Right, because once we got two things multiplying, two things multiplying to equal zero, we've got this item times this. We can use the zero product. So let's paste that. We don't need that. We don't need those. So if we set each one equal to zero. So let's isolate the variable. We're going to add one to both sides. We get y squared equals one. Y is being squared. What gets rid of a square? A square root. So the square root of y squared equals y. Once we take the square root of a variable being squared, we have to institute plus or minus. Square root of one is one. So we get y equals plus or minus one. Let's add nine to both sides. We get y squared equals nine. Take the square root and we get plus or minus, what's the square root of nine? Three. So we still get that same plus or minus one, plus or minus three as our solution. That is definitely a tricky one. And just when you thought it wasn't tricky enough, this is the last, I think it's the last one. So it's not equal to zero yet, right? But we've got this product and we can't sit here and set each one equal to 16, that doesn't work. Uh, it only works when it's equal to zero. So the first thing I have to do is I have to simplify this. So I'm gonna foil this. I'm gonna do first, outer, inner, last. So I get z squared minus five z plus z minus five equals 16. I'm gonna simplify this left side. We've got like terms here. So that makes negative 4z minus 5 equals 16. So that looks like a couple of problems, not that problem, not that problem, not that problem, not that problem. It looks like that one a little bit. Yeah, I guess this is really our first one. Uh, so we want to set this equal to 0. So we're going to subtract 16. So we get z squared minus 4z minus 21 equals 0. We're going to see, is there a common factor, or excuse me, is it in science, uh, standard form? San Francisco, yes. I forgot what common factor, what is CF? I don't know what I did a mnemonic memory for CF. Um, <clears throat> special case, no, A times C. Let's try A times C. So A is one, C is negative 21, Negative 21, factors of 21 are 1 and 21, 2, no, 3 and 7, 4, no, 5, no, 6, no, and we're already back at 7. Signs are, since they're negative, that means they're different, and the bigger gets that sign. So the bigger is going to be negative, and the smaller will be positive. That's negative 20, that's negative 4. That's my middle. So I'm going to take this equation and use these two values, plus 3z minus 7z minus 21 equals 0. I'm going to factor by grouping. So I'm going to factor out a z, and I get z plus 3. I'm going to factor out a negative 7, which gives me z plus 3. I have a z plus 3 in common, and I have a z minus 7 and I'm gonna set each one equal to zero. And some of you will start seeing 
the solutions before you before you do that. Z equals negative three and Z equals seven. You see I'm getting tired because my writing is moving in this form opposed to being horizontal. Uh, negative three, seven would be our solution to that. Woo! Are we done? Yes. So you could be able to, should be able to do any of these problems. Uh, 24, not in standard form. Here we set it equal to zero. We're setting each of these equal to zero and seeing if we can factor them. Good luck on the worksheet. Awesome job.